Hi and hello everyone. What we have been seeing is the general Markovian cues with uh, different features when you add how the system gets complex. So, we are uh, within the Markovian framework we are looking at it. We have seen priority cues earlier. What we will see next is uh, a feature which is also quite important with respect to many practical applications especially in computer and communication systems or uh, in a network scenario or in a mobile network situation or even otherwise even other places this is a feature which is uh, has lots of importance and needs to be tackled or need to be incorporated into our modeling framework. And this is called the retrial phenomena. Okay. So, what is this feature? This feature captures the phenomena of customers who make repeated attempts to access the service facility uh, when they are not getting into the service at the first place and their immediate uh, arrival team. Okay. A, a simple example could be a customer calling a local service center, say you have you know something to be done and you want to get connected to that. For example, you have your car which needs to be serviced, so you are calling the car service center there. Okay. So, what you do is you make a call right? and at the first place you see that it is a busy tone, right? So, which means that you are not able to get connected to that service facility. right? So, what you do? Okay, you hang up, you try again after some time. Okay. You, you may try immediately, that is also a possibility, right? Or you know, but you know that when uh, an ongoing call is there, so you might think that at least you know one or two minutes gap I will give and then I will make a call again, right? So, you make a call uh, again uh, after two minutes or three minutes or five minutes. Again, you might get a busy signal or you are able to get a you know free the other side is they are picking up the phone and then you can get the service key. Second time when you get busy signal what you would do okay fine then I will try after some time like again you you know you disconnect and then make call after some time right. This you may do indefinitely or you know after some time you know you will lose your patience and you say okay like I will try afterwards uh, at a later point of time right. So, this is everything is possible. So, this is the repeated attempts to gain uh, service is what you know we call it as retrial, retrial and the cues which has this feature is what the retrial cues. Okay. So, the basic idea we will depict uh, uh, like here now. Okay. So, what you have? You have a service facility, right? So, you have a service facility here to which you know customers come. So, which we call it as primary customers come and uh, if they find the service facility free or there is at least one server available to get their customers leave, right. It is a normal phenomena that you might have. Then when, right, when this particular case when if there is no uh, service facility is busy right in that case what might happen that uh, you would have you know what we call this is you know orbit so the customers in orbit customers in orbit they get into that right. So, it could be the scenario that when the service facility is busy they can get into orbit in this way or they can leave. Okay. Leave this is what we say as up impatience also right. So, this is a you know a general depiction of the scenario that might happen in this scenario that you have a service facility to which the primary customers come or customers arrive 
and if the service facility is free or if there is at least one server available then they get their service and they leave it's a normal phenomena now this new phenomena comes in only when uh, when they are not able to access the service facility immediately what they do right they can do differently like either they can leave right without joining or they can get into uh, what we call is an orbit right this means that they are inside this orbit and after some time right after some time then they will make a call again so which we denote it as in this way okay so from here then they will re arrive so customers re arrive from orbit right that is what is this phenomena can happen so they, they can re arrive here so this is primary customers and there is customers orbit who try to access the service so as it's you know you see here because at at whenever the service is occupied a server is occupied right since this happened there is no queuing happens here so that's what you know you have to understand here that there is no queue in front of service facility right that's what you need to look at so this is the general depiction so the main characteristics is what you know we are writing it here what we just explained an arriving customer enters the service immediately enter into the service if a server is available if all servers are busy then the customer may either they leave the system completely like the normal impatience or you know normal reneging kind of concept that you are looking at it right or temporarily leaves the service facility and return later to the service facility okay while away since uh, you know he is going to come back to this uh, service facility the customers are said to be in orbit so this is the word that will be used in retrial queue to mean the customers who are not got access to the service yet but they are wa waiting somewhere it's not in front of the service facility and unlike the other queuing system they are waiting somewhere and they will make an attempt to you know gain into the get the service facility at a later point of time okay so those customers are what we generally termed as that they will be in orbit now customers in orbit cannot see the status of the service facility that you have to remember because they cannot they will not know while in orbit uh, whether the server is free in the middle in the in between before they make the retrial again say for example when you are making the call to the your car service center you try you decide to try after 5 minutes maybe the customer ga, i mean the service the other side the service agent you know got free in the 30 seconds from the time you know you disconnected the call so but you do not know that right that is what it is the case okay so they will check only by re arriving as we saw here they will check only by re arriving from the orbit so arrival comes they will go to into the orbit they will be staying there for a some amount of time then they will re arrive to check the service facility and they can check the status of the server only when they are arrive it okay and customers go back and forth from the orbit to the so when next time also like when if they find is busy then again they'll take the same decision right the route is the same so they may go on in indefinitely or at some point of time they may leave due to impatience or they can totally abandon the system anything is possible when they are going back and forth from orbit they will try until the either the service is received or they abandon the system okay. now if you look at the, the the orbit right the orbit is like a queue where the customers you know are there in that orbit okay they wait for the service in that sense it is like a queue but you know the difference is that they cannot see the status of the servers it may so happen that as we said servers may be idle while there is a customer in the orbit no concept of queuing order because this is not an fcfs business in this case and service in some sense you can think of it it's is happening in a random order because a customer may come he may be in or waiting in orbit but in between another customer might come and that point of time the server may be idle so he might get into the service immediately 
So, there is no FCFS order also. And there may be 5 customers who will be waiting in the orbit and depending upon who makes the next move of retrial, right. So, anyone might get access to the service. So, it is not that okay again within orbit there is no FCFS or any order, it is random in this case. One limiting case that one can think is when the time spent in orbit for each customer is instantaneous, meaning the moment the customer uh, sees that the service facility is busy, uh, free, sorry, busy, then he will get into the orbit and as soon as he gets into the orbit, he will come back to the check immediately, which means that you know at each time point he keeps on checking to gain access, right. Right. So, that is the case. So, in this case like this orbit is like a queue, but again within the random service discipline. Okay. It is not again a, a first come first serve again because any one of them can gain access to the service server. Though they keep each one is keep trying in a, a instantaneous uh, level. Right. Now, as expected like you have now some idea with different features when you are trying to add the system becomes more complex right. Uh, if you go to much generality again the system becomes very complex, but except uh, you know for a few simple models right the other queues are generally difficult. I mean difficult we say, but the difficulty level varies and it is not that you know you cannot do anything with that system, no it is not like that, but it becomes difficult and for our course when we are looking at sub the how to incorporate such features into the queue, that is what our main aim is right. So, but it is st still quite a bit of uh, easy in some sense for some few simple models, but it may not be so for more general. Uh, systems that you know you might encounter in reality and that you might want to consider it. So, you have to simplify it to a bit. Okay. So, what we will do is that we will take it up one particular model which we call it as MM1 retrial queue. Okay. It is system behaves is in much like an MM1 queue in some sense because the features of MM1 queue are there in a way that the customers arrive according to your Poisson process with rate lambda, there is a single server and the service times are exponentially distributed with rate mu. This is what is the MM1 part of course, with assumption of independence between all those service times, arrival times and, and so on. Okay. Now, the retrial feature any arriving customer upon finding the server is busy, there is a single server only. So, when he find that the server is busy enters the orbit and spent an exponential amount of time with parameter gamma uh, in orbit before a retrial attempt. So, he spends an exponential amount of time with mean 1 by gamma. So, that is the average time that he spends in the orbit which is exponentially distributed before he makes a retrial attempt. Now, we assume that the customers will retry until they are served, which means there is no impatience which we are not in incorporating, right. If we incorporate, then this model becomes a bit more complex and then uh, that you can analyze. But for our simpler model, we say that every customer who has come to the system will leave the system only after the getting the service until that time, you know, he will be in orbit and he will keep trying to get the service. Now, all the inter arrival times of this primary arrival, service times and orbit times, they are all independent. Now, this system can be described uh, through the, uh, the random variables or the processes in a way, which we call it NST to denote the number of customers in service at type T and since there is a single server here. So, the number of customers in service could be either 0 or 1. So, this NST is basically either it will take 0 or 1 because single server. If you have multiple server, then accordingly 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on up to the server you will have this, that is a difference. N O T is the number of customers in orbit at any time t. So, this N O T could be you know any non-negative integer is what then you will get. Then this pair N S of t and N O of t is a two dimensional continuous time Marco chain with state space as i 0, where i is either 0 or 1 depending upon whether uh, there is 0 customer in the system in the with the server or there is 1 customer in the with the server, 
ok. So, R you could treat it as a server busy and server free in this single server case. N is the number of customers in the orbit which could be either 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, if you want to look at the total number of customers in the system, this will be the number of customers in the orbit plus the number of customers with the server, right. So, Ns plus NO will give this N of t. So, this is the two dimensional uh, CTMC which can describe the system state, but of course, we are looking at not in a time dependent fashion, but in equilibrium. So, in equilibrium, uh, you will have an equilibrium version of this two dimensional with this. Now, if you look at how does uh, the state transition happens in this CTMC, uh, we can look at this trade diagram where you can see one denote the server BC which is the first index. So, this row has the first index is one say meaning that the server is busy serving a customer. 0 means this second row here is basically the first index represents that the, the server is free that means there is 0 customer in the system or uh, with the server there is 0 customer ok, uh, not 0 customer in the system, but 0 customer with the server. Now, the columns represent the number of customers in orbit. So, N0 means that it could be like 0 customer in orbit, this is these two represents one customer in the orbit, these two states represent two customers in orbit, but with either one customer with server or 0 customer with the server, but there are two customers in orbit. So, this is what is the depiction. So, this is number in service is what either 1 or 0, number in orbit is 0, 1, 2 and so on. So, this is what is like ok. Now, if, if we denote as usual P i n to be the steady state probability of the system being in state i n, then they satisfy the rate balance or flow balance equations and the balance equation are given by this set ok, where this is the equation or this the first equation corresponds to P 0 n state which means for all these states and the second equation corresponds to 1 1 onwards in the first line and for 1 0 you have a separate equation and for 0 0 you do not need separate equation because there is a n here which takes care of when n is 0. So, this term vanishes automatically so we can write it together. Now, let us look at what would have happened suppose if it is the case. So, let us take a generic uh, scenario here for example, if it is state 1 2 what does that mean? There is one customer who is currently in service right and there are two in the orbit. Suppose, if I pick this as my uh, you know state uh, and then you can look at the balance equation in 1 n what would have happened here. Now, from here what would have be possible? The outgoing possibilities are that either there is an arrival comes. Now, whenever there is an arrival comes, since already there is one customer with the server, so the arrival will get into the orbit, right. So, it will move to 1 3 with the right of lambda. Now, when, when it is in 1 2, if it is, if it is, if the service is getting completed for the uh, customer who is currently getting service, then this uh, so, the system the server will become free, but the number of customers in orbit would remain as 2. So, this will move to 0 2. So, with the service completion which is at the rate mu this 1 2 from state 1 2 you will move to state 0 2 right that is what you will have right. So, this is what is the, the two things that can happen to go out from here right lambda plus mu of P 1 2 is what this term will be. Now, what about the right hand side? The flow into the state 1 2. What would have been? There it could have been 1 1 means server is busy serving one customer and there is one in orbit, but an arrival would have brought this to 1 2 right that is this. So, that is this lambda this one ok or it would have been 0 2 means server was free and there were two customers in the orbit and then an arrival happens. When an arrival happens that arrival will directly get into the service. So, the system will become 1 2. So, that is lambda p 0 in term or it could have been in state 0 3 
right 0 3 now 3 customers in the orbit now each one of them tries to gain access to the server uh, retrial attempt right since any one of each one of them spends exponential amount of gamma so the minimum is 3 times gamma so with the rate 3 gamma from 0 3 one of them can get into the service while other two would remain in orbit so from 0 3 it can move to 1 2 that is this term right so this is this one and you know this case right now 1 0 again th th there is only one possibility th this possibility is here like this side remain the same and here uh, there is nothing like this can happen so that is what uh, happens here right. So it is just a special case with appropriate modification. Now from 0 n what happens like from for example 0 2 if I pick it okay from here it can come to here only via a service completion here right so 1 2 to 0 2. But from here, if there is an arrival, it will move to 1, 2 or if one of them who are in the orbit currently with rate 2 gamma, if uh, they could you know sense the, you know, the server becoming free, then like they will move to 1, 1, right. So with the rate this 0, 2 from 0, 2 it may become 1, 1, right. That is the equation here. So since this is same for all. So that is what is this equation. So yeah, as you can see in a usual fashion uh, in, a, in our based upon our flow balance argument, the rate flow argument in equilibrium then the flow has to be equal across the state, right. So we get this flow balance equations. Now once we write down this flow balance equation, now it is up to us like you know what you want to get out of this whether you want to get a complete solution of P0 and P1n for all these states or you want to get certain expected measures that depends on the complexity. In this case it is not that difficult to obtain P0n and P1n uh, quantities okay. So let us see how we can do this. So we will take up uh, again as usual we will use the generating function approach to obtain the solution. So let us define two partial generating functions P0 of Z this is generating function for P0n and P1 of Z generating function for P1n which means that we are writing this and this basically what we are doing is we are compressing this whole line into a single entity we are compressing this whole entity uh, line into a single entity right that is what you know we are trying to do with the generating functions right. So that is what will give you P0f P1z. Now what one can do this first equation which correspond to P0n so you multiply by z to the power n and you sum right when you do that you will get this expression which is essentially equal to this expression which is equation 5 here that we are denoting it. So this is just that in the usual way that you multiply the equation by z to the power n and sum over all n you will get this. Similarly the corresponding equations of P1n you sum over this quantity by z to the power n for n greater than or equal to n and this one by z to the power 0 you sum these two equations right you will get this expression okay. So now you see here the first one involves P0 and because there is a n here obviously the derivative of that would, would give you that. So there is P0 dash the derivative of that and then P1 whereas this is P1, P0, P0 dash P1 okay. So what you can do from this expression you can pick it up what is P1 of Z and you can substitute into the, the second expression which is equation 6. Then what you will end up with once you substitute P1 of Z right here as well as here in these two then you will end up with this equation where we denote rho as in as usual by lambda by mu okay. Lambda rho by gamma times 1 minus rho z times p naught of z would be p naught dash of z because once you substitute for p1 then you have only two terms p naught z and p naught dash of z. So that would be of this form. Now this differential equation is a separable differential equation which you can write as P0 dash by P0 of Z equal to la this quantity right. Now you know that the solution of this is very simple right. So you can see that 
this implies that this is basically log of P0 of Z is equal to minus uh, lambda by gamma and this will be log of 1 minus rho Z plus some constant C1 is what then you will get okay right that is what you will get and from here you will get this expression where uh, this is a constant. So, there is a constant times this quantity is what is your P dash P0 of Z right this is what you got the uh, the partial generative function corresponding to P0 ends. Now, you can plug this uh, into this one right P0 of Z you got it. So, you find its derivative also right it is not uh, so difficult because it is 1 over 1 by some function of Z. So, you can always uh, find out its derivative. So, what you have is this one right P1 Z equal to rho P naught of Z plus gamma by mu Z times this. So, now P naught of Z P naught dash of Z you can get from here and substitute you will arrive at this just one step you just substitute then you will arrive at this expression ok. Now, in both we have this constant C, but the C can be found from the normalization condition P naught of 1 plus P 1 of 1 must be equal to 1 because total probability must be equal to 1 and that gives you C as this. So, now substituting here with this C substituting here you have now complete expressions for P 0 of Z and P 1 of Z. Now, so that is what these expressions are right. So, this is what it is now. Now, you can expand it okay, to a power series and then you can get the coefficient. Now, rather than doing with here you know we can get with here with C as a constant itself which is very easy. So, what do you do like you look at the binomial formula which is 1 plus z to the power m which is given by this right. Now, there is one m factorial by n factorial times m minus n factorial that n factorial you leave and the remaining one you know you can write it in the assessor's product. This is assumed to be 1 when n is equal to 0 that is what you know we are assuming this is the product right. Now, take this expression take this expression and then you can write it in this form ok expanding uh, this one from this equation P naught of Z as a using this expression if you expand right you will have this expression right and this is what you have here now as this expression for it which again if you rewrite you will get something like this quantity times z to the power n and we know that this quantity where c is we already determined right. So, this whole quantity is what our p 0 n ok. Similarly, you can do it for p 1 n also because this is also of this similar form. Now, finally, we obtain p 0 n and p 1 n with as given in this expression for n. Okay. So, this is all for n greater than or equal to 0, n greater than or equal to 0. So, you will get as a complete expression here. Okay. In this particular case, it is not so difficult to obtain this expression, but as you would see suppose if you introduce a impatience here then you will see that things become quite complex even this one, but it is still doable. Okay. So, this is what it is in, the, in this simple MM1 retrial Q the steady state system size probabilities. Now, once we have this in your hand now you can do answer questions related to the steady state uh, performance measure say for example, you can look at the fraction of the time the server is busy which you can obtain from here as this one as P 1 1 of 1. So, you have expression for P 1 of Z in that if you put it you will get rho. But you can also apply uh, you know get this fraction of time server is busy as equal to rho uh, using Little's law when you apply it to the server alone and that will also be equal to the average number of customers in the service right. So, this rho is actually also it will be equal to uh, the average number of customers in service right because P 1 is what then you will you will get from there. Now, if you want the PGF of the number of customers in orbit right. So, then I have to add these two quantities multiplied by z to the power n 
and then I have to get. So, that effectively means P0 of Z plus P1 of Z will give me the probability generating function for the number of customers in orbit. And if I denote LO to denote the its mean number of customers in orbit, then LO I can obtain it as a derivative of this which you know you can obtain it to be this. right? Now, if you look at this quantity, this is what you know you have to you look at here. So, there is one term here and there is the another term here, right. So, this is a typical of such retrial and in any many situations like this will also hold true, not just on retrial phenomena, but in somewhere else also we have seen already one or two, it may be true in any other case also. So, what we have? So, this is a product of two terms the average number in Q for an MMU in Q right this is average number not in system, but in Q in an MM1 and a term that depends on the retrial rate right. So, there is this gamma comes into picture. Now, if gamma is large okay, what does that mean that the customer spends little time in orbit before making a, a another attempt to gain access to the server right. So, that is gamma large meaning right and as in the in the limiting case as gamma tends to infinity that is what you know we uh, are looking at the instantaneously coming back with a retrial attempt to gain access to the server right. So, they spend no time in orbit and hence are continuously able to monitor the status of the server. So, in such situation as you can see as gamma tends to infinity this will be you know tending to 1. So, you will get only this term which is basically what you would have had you know in the case of an MM1Q right. This LO is the mean number of customers in orbit. Now that we have steady state probabilities are generating function we can obtain all these quantities very nicely there is no problem. Now the mean time spent in orbit suppose if I want again okay. So, that is by Little's law is WO which is equal to LO by lambda which will be giving this again you can write it as a product of these two terms. Similarly, the average time in system right and the average number of customers in the system meaning everything included right can be determined similarly where w is equal to w naught plus 1 by mu because this is what is the his waiting time and the service time for any customer because we are not a uh, assuming that a customer leaves in in between right he they will be there forever in a way until they get the service. So, which you know you can obtain it to be this and again you see here product of two terms one correspond to mm1 and one with the parameter gamma and L which is the average number of customers in the system again this is a product of two terms one correspond to an mm1 and another term that is depends on gamma. And this could also be shown to be equal to LO plus rho because we know LO is the average number of customers in orbit and rho is the average number of customers in, serv in service. So, sum of these two will be the average number of customers in the system. Okay. So, as we notice in all cases the service measures are the product of analogous measure for the MM1Q and a term that goes to 1 as gamma tends to infinity. Conversely, if gamma tends to 0, the expected service measures go to infinity because blocked customers spend an extremely long period of time in orbit before trading, right. That is what is the other extreme, gamma tends to 0. Now, to see how exactly this will be looking like, now we can just depict one, of course, we are not trying to draw. Uh, in an exact manner, but just to get the idea. Suppose, if I look at uh, this particular graph where gamma as in the x axis and say LO which is easy to depict here. So, what the figure will look like is essentially it will be something like this it will come okay. and this would be the MM1 case. and this is the MM1 retrial case, right. So, you can see here how it will behave, you know, one can depict 
just uh, if you if you just plot it whatever you have it l here so the corresponding mm1 case is essentially this and this again it's intuitive that you know it should be like this but again how exactly whether it is coming like these or it is coming like these right so you have to understand so for which you need to look at exactly the rate so for which you need the expression that is what our expressions would help us to understand right so this is lower value of gamma for example gamma here results in large number of uh, customers in orbit because each customer now wait long period before making a retrial attempt whereas gamma tends to infinity it is something like you know they are making you know at every instantaneous in that case it will be closer to your mm1 system that's what you know you will give okay and also like you know you would see that how this approaches and so on this is you know simple one but then if you have more parameters more then of course you can have much more interesting phenomena which can be brought out from this okay so this is all about retrial of course you know you have the steady state distribution so you can talk about some more measures if you are interested i mean if there is anything uh, what is the this many number beyond in the orbit and so on suppose if it is the case okay but at least the basic performance measure we can obtain in this manner okay and this performance measure can be studied with respect to the retrial rate not just retrial rate even with respect to other parameters you can do but since this is a new feature that we have introduced so how exactly this retrial rate plays out vis a vis without any such retrial phenomenon okay so this is another feature that can be added of course here we have studied with respect to mm1 system but of course this can be extended to for example in the same particular case so you can say that you know you can add impatient feature in that case what will happen or you could have multi server right then you know how how much is the complexity you can think uh, or any other generalization like uh, in terms of the inter arrival time distribution or service time distribution or any other feature like this one can study and this is how the markovi the simple queues with mm1 for example if the moment you introduce retrial you are no longer in some sense of a bdp model itself so it has become a more general markovi model in the same way a bdp model when you introduce more features say for example you could think of server failure server being interrupted you know the scheduling there could be or you know server may not start work until uh, certain number of customers in the system like this there are n number of features that you can observe in reality and in each of this case right the moment you want to incorporate into the feature the simple markovian model might become a more general a bit more complex markovian model and any such model like what we have exhibited so far in this general markovian system type that you can in principle analyze but how much how far you can go how much you will be able to handle depends on the scenario that you as you have seen for example in the retrial case you know getting the exact distributions even in a very simple situation is not that easy in retrial you could do that still even if with the simple uh, model retrial imposed on it like this this things would vary right so accordingly like you have to base on that so this is what you know we uh, you know see in the markovian general setup this is how one can incorporate the different features into the elementary models and see that how the you know system performs and by incorporation of that how much the system is being affected in which way everything can be studied in that feature okay so this is uh, basically we are still within the markovian framework incorporation of features of course we are we have not you know incorporated all the features so far you know there are plenty of other features which we will not be able to cover but of course that if you are interested you can look uh, deeper into this case okay fine so we end our discussion of this retrial to here we will see in the next lecture thank you bye